That is such a good point, Ali. And um, we're talking with Ali Garib, a senior editor at Open Zion. Ali, I'm glad you mentioned, you probably mentioned two films that many of our listeners and viewers are not familiar with at Sundance. There's also been a lot of controversy about the extremely widely viewed film Zero Dark Thirty, which was made by Catherine Bigelow. It's been nominated for many Oscars. And in, that film is, is about the hunt for bin Laden principally, and certainly they depict quite a bit of torture. There's some controversy as to whether Catherine Bigelow, the director, and the writer, Mark Bull, used the accurate, an accurate depiction of how torture was used in the hunt for bin Laden. Is Zero Dark Thirty factually accurate? Oh, uh, well, there's actually a, a debate going on about that. And, you know, if you ask uh, uh, Senator Carl Levin, the head of the Senate Armed Services Committee, he'll say that, no, it's not factually accurate, that no direct, that, that no torture was directly involved in finding bin Laden. And Dianne Feinstein, the Democratic head of the Senate Select Intelligence Committee, has said the same thing publicly. So, And, and actually, they've been joined by a Republican John McCain, who was a victim of torture when he was a POW in Vietnam, and also is vociferously opposed to, to the torture policies of, uh, of, of, the, of the past in the Bush administration. And, uh, but there are some, you know, it's funny, when I, when I was at the Sundance Film Festival, Peter Bergen's Manhunt movie was airing directly across the hallway from Zero Dark Thirty, and there were a few uh, jokes about that. But, uh, but, but it seems clear that in Zero Dark Thirty that the narrative does make uh, torture an integral part of catching bin Laden, which, you know, Dianne Feinstein, Carl Levin, and, and John McCain have all publicly denied as a factually accurate claim. That said, Dianne Feinstein's committee, is, I was talking about this before, has prepared a 6,000-word report on the, on the so-called enhanced interrogation techniques used by the CIA uh, in their counterterrorism operations, but she, her committee, and the Obama administration have so far refused to make that report public you know, we really could, could answer this question pretty definitively by combing through those 6,000 pages, but that just hasn't happened yet. It's fascinating stuff, Ali. You know, I, I have to be honest, I recently saw Zero Dark Thirty, and I encourage all of our viewers and, and our audience to go out there and watch it and watch Manhunt and the, the film by uh, uh, Jeremy Scahill, which... Uh, it's called Dirty Wars. Dirty Wars, okay. Um, and, and we will post links to those on TakeActionNews.com, on our Facebook page, and on Twitter... I, I guess I, I, I certainly enjoyed it as a film. What, what did you think about it? Did you, were there any other aspects of it that were unappetizing to you or disturbing? Uh, no, I thought, I thought the torture one sort of was the, uh, was, the, was the main culprit in that way. You know, I, much to the chagrin of a lot of my progressive friends, I, uh, I like to separate my entertainment and arts from politics and I actually thought it was a, it was a pretty good spy thriller, especially for the last scene, the raid itself. I was I was kind of on the edge of my seat in the theater here in New York, and so so I actually enjoyed it in that way, even though I found its uh, its politics to be a little bit disturbing. Now I think that perhaps in that vein, the most disturbing thing about it, and uh, and Steve Cole had a great review of the movie, my colleague at the New America Foundation, where he talked about the way the film was presented as a journalistic account. They uh they have. The, the, the movie opens with a uh, with you know white words on a black background that say this movie is based on actual first-hand accounts and of course it's woven in a way in a sort of fantastical narrative that makes all the key players um, uh, it sort of sets them in historical events as they unfold which of course is, is is highly unlikely that it actually happened that way but the fact is is that they presented this movie as a journalistic account and in fact Mark Bull, the, the writing partner of Catherine Bigelow, is a fantastic, fantastic journalist. Uh, but I just think that they, um, it's a sort of uh, dereliction of journalistic duty, the way that they presented torture, uh, without really having a clear, um, the clear counter-argument, especially as given by the most reliable American officials uh, in the Congress and elsewhere, that there is a strong counter-narrative for this. Well, Peter Bergen's movie is, Manhunt was much well, better about gonna that. Be, we're going to be looking out for the, the, the hearings to confirm John Brennan as the head of the Central Intelligence Agency coming up on <laughs> February 7th. And I encourage all of our viewers and our listeners to, to go out there, see Zero Dark Thirty, also see Manhunt and see Dirty Wars, these two new independent films that are out. 
Ali Garib, your analysis of national security is always fascinating. Thanks for joining us again. It's a pleasure to be back with you guys. All right. Coming up next on Take Action News, the passing of a New York City icon, and perhaps a national icon, former Mayor Ed Koch. We'll be right back after this.